In this video I'll be scraping an achieved in every 2024 level 2 and level 3 physics exam in the laziest way possible. Now just a disclaimer, although all these answers are arguably allowed by the schedule, I am very much pushing my luck with a few of these and make no guarantee that all these answers would actually fly in the final exam. Starting with level 2 waves. Let's not waste time reading all of this. Name the physics phenomena that causes the change in the waves shown in the diagram above as they move from left to right. This is refraction. Describe and explain the phenomenon identified in part A. Since we're moving into shallower water, the wave slows and the wave gets higher. And this question looks like we have a pulse from a less dense rope going into a more dense rope. Compare the velocity of the reflected pulse with that of the transmitted pulse. Well, the reflected pulse is going to be in the less dense area, and the transmitted pulse is going to be in the more dense, which means that the reflected pulse is going to be faster. Question 2 has a bunch of stuff we're not going to read. We have a concave mirror. The image is enlarged and upright. State the third property of the image. It's behind the mirror, so it's virtual. Question B has a bunch of math we're not going to do. Question C wants us to do a ray diagram. Our first ray goes parallel to the axis and then through the focal, and that'll do us for achieved. We have a candle, a convex lens, and an image projected onto a screen. State the property of the image that allows it to be projected onto a screen. Well, to do that, it must be real. I think we've done enough ray diagrams for one day, and we'll skip this too. For question 3, we've got this excellent grey rectangle here, and it looks like we're dealing with fibre optics. State what the symbols N1 and N2 represent. They're the refractive index. Name the phenomenon that allows light rays to be transmitted along a fibre optic cable. That's just total internal reflection. Skipping over this. And I think we're about done with question 3. And we'll move on to the next paper. Let's look at level 2 mechanics. We have a dog running in a circle. Add a labelled arrow to the diagram below to show the force acting on the dog as it runs in a circle at constant speed. Well, that's just going to be centripetal. On the other side of the table, the dog hits a slippery patch of the floor and slides off at a tangent. Use physics principles to explain the dog's velocity immediately after it starts moving off at a tangent. Well, the velocity is just going to be the same. And we have the dog sliding, and Jono reaches out and cushions the dog. Use physics principles to explain why Jono put out his arms to cushion the dog, rather than let the dog stop quickly in 0.1 seconds. Well, that's because the force is going to be less. Looks like Tony is now doing a bit of baking. Another top tier picture from NCA. Add labelled arrows to the diagram above to show the two forces acting on the flower. We're going to have a support force and we're going to have a gravity force. And just need to make sure that they're both about equal. When Jono brings the groceries to the front door, he's either climbing the stairs or using the ramp. Compare both routes by considering these three things. The height is the same, so the work is the same. And the ramp is longer, so the force is less. Tony is using a spice rack, and I'm sure all of this information is really riveting. State the conditions required for the spice rack to be in equilibrium. That's always going to be that the net force and torque are zero. If you wander into the exam without knowing these conditions, you might want to rethink your life choices. Question 3. Looks like Tony's adding apples to a cake. We'll once again skip the calculations. Looks like we've got the apple being thrown. Identify the type of motion. Well, that's just going to be projectile. That's about enough for this paper. Let's move on to electricity. Two parallel plates. 
On the diagram below, select one of the 12 volt cells labeled A and B and correctly connect the cell to the plate so it produces the field shown below. Well, the field lines always point towards negative, and on a power source, the long one is always positive and the short one is negative, so we just connect them up like so. Job done. An electron is released from the negative plate, ignoring the effect of gravity, and hell, let's just ignore this question. On the diagram below, after ignoring the effects of gravity, draw the path of the electron inside the field. Good enough. We've got a circuit here. The circuit has three identical lamps. A dimmer switch represented by the variable resistor is initially set to 3.5 ohms. When all the lamps are operating, the current in lamp D is 1.4 amps. Explain why the current in lamp B is 0.7 amps. Well, the reason it's half is because we have twice the resistance. Explain what would happen to the brightness of lamp D if lamp B were to stop working. Well, if lamp B stopped working, then this branch just wouldn't operate, and we'd have a series circuit. And I reckon that's enough for question two. Question three is about a fine looking tractor. Use physics principles to explain how the voltage is induced between the ends of the sprayer boom. Well, for one thing, the boom has negative electrons. And while we've basically explained nothing, this is still enough for an achieved point. Well, that's all the level 2 papers, so let's just move on to the level 3s. Starting with wave systems, and we've got a lovely looking pan flute. Not really in the mood for drawing any harmonics. Explain how standing waves are formed in a pan flute. Well, I can tell you that when they're in phase, there are antinodes. And I'll leave the rest up to the marker's imagination. For question D, looks like we've got a question about beats. Calculate how much further the cork needs to be pushed into the pipe and explain how it's possible to hear when the cork is in the correct position. Well, when the frequency gets closer, the beat's going to get slower. And with that, we'll just move straight on to question two. And we'll just skip all the preamble. What does the term N lambda represent? Path difference. Mr. Smith is shining a red laser between two slits and a diffraction grating. Describe the differences between the patterns formed and explain the reason for each difference. The two slits have less gaps than the diffraction grating, and so we can say the two slits are going to be dimmer. For question D, we've got a lovely rainbow pattern, and I'm sure we could launch into a big old complicated explanation of why this occurs, but let's just leave it at red wavelength longer. Question three is all about the Doppler effect, something something train. Describe what Jane and her friends would hear compared to the driver as the approaching train blows its whistle. The F is going to be higher. Calculate the speed of the train. No, thank you. And all of this just looks like way too much hard work. So let's move on to mechanics. We have a ball rolling down a ramp. Who would ever expect to see such a bizarre context in a physics exam? Looks like question A wants us to do a calculation, so you know we're skipping it. Show that the maximum speed is that. And I'm still really not in the mood for much calculation. But if at point Y we're at our maximum speed, then the reaction force from the track is going to be zero. If it went faster, it'd leave the track. And if it went slower, then we'd have a reaction force. We're asked to compare the forces between point Y and point X. Well, at the very least, the weight is going to be the same, because why wouldn't it be? Moving on to question two. A golf ball of mass 0.460, and at the mention of golf, I'm already starting to fall asleep, so we'll just skip ahead. Calculate the rotational inertia of the flywheel. Not really in the mood for doing that, but we could say that the tension force in our string here is going to be the gravitational force from our cup and ball minus the net force that is causing our wheel to spin. Explain what will happen to the final velocity of the ball and cup if the flywheel is replaced with a solid disc. Well, if it's a solid disc with the same radius and mass, because the mass is no longer all on the outside, our eye is going to be smaller, and if our inertia goes down, then our velocity is going to go up. Moving on to question three, 
state the two conditions necessary for the ball bearing to be considered to be moving with simple harmonic motion. Well, the force is proportional to negative d. Our first condition is that it's proportional, and our second one is that it's opposite, negative. So that's job done. Eventually the ball bearing comes to a rest. Using the axis provided, draw a labelled graph for the displacement versus time for five complete oscillations. And while we could do a real fancy sinusoidal, I reckon that's about good enough. Name this phenomenon, damping. That should do us for mechanics, let's move on to electricity. Question 1 has some riveting information. Explain the meaning of the term EMF. Well, that's the voltage when there's no current. Stefan observes what happens to the voltmeter reading while opening and closing the switch. Explain why the readings are the same or different. Values and calculations are not required. To answer this question fully is going to require some detailed analysis, so you know we're not doing that. But we can look at this section here, see that that switch is open, so we're going to have no current flowing, meaning this voltage reading here is just going to be 12. C looks like a calculation. Looks like we've got a new circuit here. Give an in-depth explanation, I think not, of what Stefan would observe by comparing the brightness of lamps A and B. Well, when the switch is closed, we're going to have some complicated behaviour here with the capacitor and the lamp. So let's just pretend that it doesn't exist, which means we just have a voltage source, a resistor and a lamp. And so lamp B is going to stay lit, because why wouldn't it? Moving on to question 2, skipping the calculation questions. Harry drops a bar magnet, say no more. Because we have this copper ring here, the magnet is going to slow. And we have a time constant question, where you might recall that the time constant is the time for a 63% change. And if you do, you have an achieved. Moving on to question 3. The inductor has a soft iron core. Explain what Rachel would observe in the brightness of the lamp when she slowly removes the iron core from the inductor. Less core, less inductance, less reactance, less impedance, which means more current, and therefore brighter. Rachel then inserts the soft iron core and adds a capacitor to the circuit in order to achieve resonance. Explain why the reactance of the capacitor needs to be at 26.4 ohms. Probably not going to do that. Begin your answer by describing what happens at resonance. Well, the current is at its biggest. And now the moral of this video isn't to prove that physics is easy, because it certainly isn't. It's that even if you're not going for an excellence mark, always attempt the excellence questions. It's often in those questions that you'll find the easiest achieve points.